lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. Thank you for tuning in to the NAACP Forum. We are Brockton's Choice for Civil Rights News. We're continuing our political series. Today in the studio, we have City Councilor at Large candidate Gary Keith. Gary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for letting, having me here. Are you, are you glad to be here? I'm always glad to be so here. So we tell everybody it's just a social conversation in the living room with the bishop. Are you ready for me? I'm ready. So you're running for City Council. Why? Well. Basically, uh, two elections ago, I decided that I didn't see anyone making any moves to get involved, okay, roll up their sleeves, you know, and dig in and get involved to help the city out. So I said to my wife one day, I mean, there was a lot that went into it, but uh, basically it was my turn. You know, uh, let me roll up my sleeves, let me jump in and see what I can do to make a difference. And uh, here I am. When you say roll up your sleeves, what does <clears throat> that mean to the constituents in the city of Brockton? What do you basically, want to get involved with? I want to get involved with trying to make the quality of life for our, in our city better. You know, um, we have a lot of, uh, at that time there, we had, you know, a lot of crime going on. Um, there wasn't any activities going for our youth. Um, it was just stagnant. You know, it seemed like uh, nobody was involved to try to make anything better. You know, they were, uh, it, it was like uh, everything was becoming the norm. And that's not how it should be. So basically, um, I decided to get involved to see um, how our government worked and to uh, see if I can make a difference. You know, it was my turn. You know, give me the ball, coach. Put me in. You said that you needed to get involved. You wanted to see how government worked. Are you in some sort of positions now? I am right now. After I ran in, um, in the first election, two, uh, two elections ago, mm -hmm. um, the newly uh, elected mayor at that time there called me in afterwards and uh, asked me um, and appointed me to the planning board. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and then from the planning board, they appointed me to the uh, zoning board as a subcommittee member. So this is my fourth year on both. When you, uh, as your role on the planning board, first tell our constituents, what does, what do, what does the planning board do here in Brockton? Well, basically a lot of uh, businesses come into town and they, um, they have to come in front of the planning board with their plans, um, with their sketches, how they plan on doing it, the size, you know, the, uh, how much green space, how many, if it's a house that they're building, how many bedrooms, you know, those things like that. Um, so basically, and then it, it's kind of funny because of the fact that we have old zoning laws, mm. okay, where I sit on both. So basically we have to be very selective as to uh, what's coming in, where it's going, you know. And then um, we have a lot of people that actually come in and that, that oppose, you know, some of the projects that are going in, whether it's a, a house or a new business whatever it might be. So we have to make sure that it all fits into uh, how Brockton is set up. Let me ask you, because since you have experience on the planning board, <coughs> the, the, the planning board as well as uh, the zoning board of appeals, you said that folks come in, uh, citizens come in and they're opposed to particular projects. Any particular project that stands out that um, you are on the side of the citizens of the city? There's been plenty. Um, some I don't really want to you know, bring out because they were touchy at the time, but uh, there have been times when I've gone against the, the board, okay, and voted uh, the lone vote um, in favor of a citizen or an applicant at that point there, even though it might have been a losing uh, vote that I cast it. Um, but I have argued, you know, the points of why some things should go forth. And um, at the same time, it's been the opposite of why some things shouldn't go forth. Um, and like I said, I didn't want to get into specifics, but there was one uh, just last week that has been, the applicants have not been showing up. And they keep tabling it and tabling it and tabling it. And last, last week, I actually, uh, <clears throat> they wanted to table it again. And I said, no, no more. You know, because everyone has to do their part. Everyone has to bring something to the table. You want so government to work. I do want government to work. You know, but government can't sit around and wait also. You know, government has to move. There's more than just one person that's involved. There's 98 
thousand people in the city of Brockton, and we have to make decisions that affect each and every last one of us. So, Gary, your <clears throat> your um, signs are everywhere in the city of Brockton, and the calls that we've gotten, it says experience matters. Is this what you're talking about? Because some have seen that experience matters that you might not think that the current city council body has a, the prerequisite experience. Are you talking about bringing that planning board experience? What do you talk about when you talk about exactly, experience matters? Exactly that, bringing that experience that I've gained over the last four years, <clears throat> excuse me, but not only that experience, lifelong experiences, life Give experiences. Give us some examples. Well, one, I've been married to this beautiful wife of mine for 31 years. We've raised seven kids. She's in, in charge Brockton. or you're in charge? She's in charge. Okay, that's Listen, what we want to hear. Ha happy wife, happy <laughs> life, okay? <laughs> um, but that's a job within itself, okay? Good and bad, but you know right. something? To make it this long, you know, you have to be able to work together. Absolutely. We raised seven kids in the city of Brockton that have all gone through um, the Brockton public school system. We have four grandchildren now. I, was, I have an extensive background in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. Um, you know, I'm 58 years old right now, you know, so I've been working all my life. I've been involved with helping and serving all my life. I've been a member of my church for over 28 years, and I've served uh, numerous years uh, in the capacity of an armor bearer and as a gatekeeper. So serving is nothing new to me. And uh, this is just taking it to another level. Does your faith play an important part of your life? Very much, very much. Now the day starts without me on my knees thanking God for just having me wake up today. Amen. Let me ask you, crisscrossing across the city of Brockton, you hear a lot of negatives, you hear a lot of positives. Tell me what is right about Brockton. We have some very strong people here. The resolve of the Brockton folks are second to none. Okay, we have a lot of people that want exactly what I want. Okay, they want a, to have a good, um, a nice safe area to go home to. They want to be able to enjoy the quality of life on the weekends if they take their family to a park or whatever. They all want the same thing. They want the crime to, to, uh, to go away, but this is a major city. You know, um, there's going to be crime, okay, no matter where you go. Every, I, I believe that every- But are we a crime-ridden city? Are we what? Are we a crime-ridden city? Do no. you believe? Do you believe the, in the perception that Brockton is a crime-ridden city? No, I do not. No, I do not. I believe we have a pocket. We have a a, a pocket, uh, for lack of a better word of saying it, a pocket-sized bit of crime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe that most of it is the same people doing the same thing over and over again. If we can rid that of it, you you know. You'll see the quality of life go up, and the crime would go down. So, so you're running for an at-large seat, mm -hmm. and you, as you know, you've run before. At-large covers the entire city of Brockton. Yes. I'm sh quite sure you've crisscrossed our great city. You know, I've had um, uh, people have questions around how our city looks, mm -hmm. a need for a facelift. What is your program or your suggestion around dealing with blight? Well, first of all, we need to have code enforcement. Our code enforcement, I think, is lacking very, very bad, okay? Um, with the planning board, we just adopted a, um, a blueprint for Brockton, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is actually a comprehensive plan that's actually getting ready to go before the, uh, the full city council for adoption. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to <clears throat> turn Main Street back into a two-way street, change uh, what businesses go in and things like that to get downtown looking better than it is right now. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we need code enforcement though because if you have a, an automobile dealership and you have a license for 25 cars, then you should be able to, code enforcement should uh, adhere to that and make sure that they stay within that limit. And uh, I think that if we do that, we can actually, you know, change the blight of Brockton a little so bit. You know? So, uh, Mr. Keefe, you, when you say code enforcement, we have code enforcement officers now. We do. Are you talking in terms of new ordinances? Are you talking in terms of increasing staffing? What are you specifically addressing? I'm talking about increasing staffing to where we can get out there and, and do our due diligence on all of them. I think from time to time we need to pull a license and, and check some of the businesses that mm -hmm. are already um, in business around the city of Brockton. We need to go in, you know, the code enforcement department needs a couple of more, you know, they need to increase their staff to be able to go in there and pull it out and just go and do what they should be doing, which is checking to make sure that they're adhering to the rules that 
planning, that's where planning comes in again, mm -hmm. has set forth. Okay? And uh, I think that we need to do that because there's no code enforcement. I think a lot of people know that and they're doing whatever they want to do. So let me, let me ask this question. When you talk about increasing staffing, uh, whether it's uh, code enforcement or whether it's the uh, helping out uh, the school department beyond uh, the dollars <coughs> that we've been trying to get to them, this, this, this revenue by way of the two and a half levy, what's your position on maximizing that as you're aware the city council uh, voted, supported the mayor in maximi maximizing, excuse me, during the last budget season at the two and a half uh, which is the maximum. Mm -hmm. What is your position? Would you have voted for that levy increase? Yes, I would. Yes, I Why would. would you have done so? Because women desperately need a revenue, and sometimes you have to make that harsh decision. But see, the voters of Brockton vote leaders, and every decision that, if I'm elected, every decision that I make is not going to be a popular decision, but it is going to be a decision that a leader has to make sometimes for the benefit of the citizens of Brockton. And everyone's not going to like it. Okay, but I will try to make sure that I do listen to my voters, I mean to the, to the uh, citizens of Brockton, okay, and, uh, but at the end of the day, they elect, if they elect me, I have to make that decision for them, and I hope to make the right one. So in that earmark, I think that um, we needed it, because right now, basically, uh, the homeowners and the water rates and everything are what's sustained in Brockton. Do you believe that um, we're doing a, a, a better job with respect to diversity in this city? <clears throat> I think we're doing better, but I think we still have a long way to go. Give examples of what you would do differently. First of all, that, that's a very tough question, okay, because you have to be fair to everybody, and it is a very sticky uh, window there. So, so I'm going to cut you off, because it's interesting that you say fair to everyone. Mm -hmm. So we look at um, diversity in the city of Brockton where as with respect to the school department, huge numbers of, of, of pupils where I think of 83.9% student population that is diverse, mm -hmm. less than 10, 12% of the staffing represents of the, the, uh, the, the diversity of the city. So the reason why I'm gonna cut you off is, is that you, you made an interesting point, we have to be fair to everyone. Do we really have to be fair to everyone because there's a history of discrimination? I mean, it's, a, it's an honest question. It, yeah, it, it's an honest question, and I'm going to give you the most honest way that I can the answer The non-political answer. Right. The truth of the matter is, is that you want to hire the best candidate for the job. Yes, but yes. But we also have to bring the staffing levels up to represent the students that are in the school, because there are times to where, and from my own personal experience, yes. I was an honorable student coming through school, and I never thought about it at that time. But my first grade teacher was black, okay, Mrs. Tidwell. And God rest her soul, because at that time, near as old as I am, she's probably not here anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the thing was is that I didn't, never looked at it, but I related to her, okay? And sometimes you need a teacher, you need someone like you that, can, that could, a kid can relate to. And the other thing is, is that you have to understand where a person comes from, mm -hmm. okay? And like in the last election, my slogan was, I am Brockton. And that is because I walked in a lot of sh different shoes here in Brockton. I've been poor, I've been homeless, I've been in the food pantry, I've been on welfare. You know, by the grace of God, I don't have that now, but I've been there. So I can relate to all the citizens in the, in, that live here in the city of Brockton. At the same time, some of the students at the school need to be able to look at someone that looks like them. Someone that they can go to if they have a problem that they even feel that might understand their problem because they look like them, you know. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily the case, mm -hmm. but sometimes it is. Are you an uh, individual, so when we talk about being um, fair to everyone, um, I hear that a lot as well, but are you an inv individual that supports quotas in terms of affirmative action program that would allow us to increase the numbers? Or are you... Are you for um, saying that you know it should be the best qualified, but we must do something to enhance the pipeline? It, it should be. It, listen, we need the best candidate, but we do need to increase the quotas. So how we get to that happy medium, it has to be done because we do need to diversify. What is your thought in terms of because we're on the subject of diversity? What is mm -hmm. your thoughts around um, the sanctuary city designation? 
it was a hot issue um, this past year <coughs> with respect to advocates in the city of Brockton believing that we truly needed that designation. Uh, were you one that was endorsing a sanctuary city, or what was your particular? What is your position on that? Actually, I was neutral on it. Um, trying to find out more information on it, I have found out a lot more mm -hmm. on it right now. I think it's still um, because we do have a revenue problem in the city of Brockton. It's it's like twofold because of the fact that if we if we are a sanctuary city under our current uh, federal leadership, we lose federal funding. And at the same time, I don't feel that it's right that anybody walking down the street can be, you know, stopped and, uh, and pulled over or for whatever reason um, for that. I mean, because I, I get a lot of times, a lot of times I get people that ask me if I'm Cape Verdean. So what if I'm walking down the street one day and uh, someone asks me, am I Cape Verdean, am I Ill Ill uh, or illegal or whatever, and I don't have ID on me at that time to back it up, and, but I wasn't doing anything in the process to be stopped. So no, I don't. You know, so I think we yeah. need. I do think that we need um, immigration reform, though, and we need it now. So, with respect to, so you were a former police officer. Um, enforcement, enforcement of ICE civil warrants. What's your position on that, then? Can you repeat that again? The ICE civil warrants, the immigration mm -hmm. detainer warrants. Should police officers be enforcing them? I know. I believe that the governor is sponsoring legislation. Uh, that would empower local police officers to do so. The mm -hmm. Supreme Judicial Court has taken a position that we should not be doing that. And I don't think we should either. I don't think we should either because So you of the would fact not support the legislation? No. And, and the reason why I say that, okay, is, and I don't know as much about it as I should, but I'm, fair I'm, enough, I'm, fair I'm, enough. I'm shooting off the cuff here as a, uh, uh, with the law enforcement background. The thing is, is that <clears throat> one thing about the city of Brockton is that the citizens here, we have a good relationship. Uh, let me back up a bit. We don't have the problems with our police department right now that a lot of cities across America have. Okay, and the mayor I know and a lot of the uh, the city councils and stuff uh, and the police chief, they're trying to um, broker a, a better uh, a better relationship between the police and in, in, uh, in the neighborhoods. Okay, and I think that we don't need to go backwards with that. I mean, I think that would actually uh, put the two sides at odds again, even more so than what they are already. So. So I say let ICE do its job and let the police, the local police, do theirs. Taking a step back uh, to economic development, so you are uh, on the planning board, you're on the Zoning Board of Appeals. One of the, some of the feedback that I've gotten in the last year is that we don't have a central location, especially for our immigrant population, new opening up businesses across the city, but we don't have a welcoming or a business center for them at City Hall where they'll be able to go um, and see what the, how basically the rubber hits the road. Would you support, sponsored by the municipality, one central location for uh, our pop, some of our population to go to, or all of our population to go to around opening up businesses, <coughs> business licensing, basically a welcoming center? Would you support that? You know something, I believe, that's the first time I heard of that, um, Tony, and, and I believe that I, I would. And the reason being is that I've met with a lot of uh, different uh, organizations around the city, and um, especially, um, I'm talking about whether it's uh, Cape Verde, a Cape Verdean organization or, or a Latino organization, whatever it may be. And there are a lot of people out there that can actually get together and have, and ha if we put that in one central location, there's enough um, experience around the city of Brockton that can actually help people with that. So I do, I so, would go for that. So I've interviewed candidates and they've talked about the relationship between um, or at least I've broached the, the subject of the relationship between the legislative, the city council, and the executive branch. What is your position? It, are there tensions right now? Do you think it's a good relationship between the city council and the mayor? <coughs> what would you do differently? What I would do differently is basically communications. Um, I think anyone that knows me right now knows that I'm approachable, I'm transparent, mm -hmm. I'm consistent, okay? And at, nothing should just be a no. Okay, um, if, if you bring an idea to the table, okay, maybe it's not, maybe I'm not going for that idea at that time there, but talk to me. Let me see, explain your point to me, and then maybe we can add or subtract to that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that I believe that too many egos are getting in the way. I believe that there's a, <clears throat> I believe that everyone has some people, I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. um, on our city council, 
have their own personal agendas as for why they won't do such a thing. I don't know what it might be, whatever. I, I, for lack of a better word, I'm not them, so I can't say. But I know that I think that we could move the city along better with more communications between the city council, each other on the city council, for one, and with our mayor. So would you, uh, in saying that, would you support a change of the terms of office for the city councilor and the mayor? Would you, would, would you like to see a 3-4, three, 3-3? Three, <clears throat> three? I would love to see a 3-4. I think it takes time to, do, um, to, just, uh, to get something done because by the time you, um, you have an election, let's say I get in there this year here, and uh, you know, you're, you're, just as you're starting to get- You would support get, a study for that? Oh yeah, definitely. Because once you start uh, you know, getting your feet grounded and starting to make something happen, it's time to campaign again which takes you, you know, away from what you, you, you know, what you really need to be doing. So, I mean, um, I, I would definitely. Um, so if you could, that. if you could, if you had a magic wand that allowed you to get a majority of uh, your possibly future colleagues to vote for an ordinance, what would you love to change? Or what would you like to change here in terms of city governance? <laughs> one thing, one thing that comes to mind. First and foremost, I think that we need uh, a four-year. The first thing would be a four-year for the mayor. Okay. Um, I would like to see it for the mayor even, and even the if, council. Even, even if that's not done for the city council, you definitely even, believe that the, the... Even if it's not done for the city council. Okay, so the and, executive should be four. True. And, okay. and the other thing I would love to see, if that couldn't happen, is I, th I would love to see the mayoral race, believe it or not, and I, this would have to go back into something else, but I would love to see the mayoral race be in the off year of the uh, city council. You know, I really would. What, um, in terms of your walk in the community, what are the citizens saying to you that keeps them up at night about our city? Basically, th this, they're tired of not knowing who their counselors are. Mm -hmm. They don't know who they are, how to contact them. They don't see their counselors. They feel that they're out there by themselves. The ones that I have met and uh, over the past few years of being a community activist, I get phone calls every single day from someone for some form or another, okay, because they don't know who their counselor are, is. Or when they did go to their counselor, they, it fell on deaf ears. And that's the biggest thing that frustrates them. So do you think, uh, what would you do differently though? I'd be accessible. I'm accessible now. So, but how do you get the word out that you're a counselor? Let me, I, I guess that's, I'm trying to get it. <clears throat> People have said, I've heard that also, um, especially with the school committee, but how do we change that perception or how do we communicate who is out there representing the particular uh, wards? Well, see, I don't know exactly how to get it out there with the wards. I mean, that's something to where, you know, you just have to keep, as a counselor at large, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. would just keep letting people know if I'm talking to, you know, once I find out which ward they're in, I'll let them know that they have five counselors, okay? They have their ward counselor and they have four counselors at large. <clears throat> but one thing I've heard over the last two elections that I've been involved in mm -hmm. from all the counselors is how they were going to have their monthly ward meetings or, or quarterly ward meetings and, and uh, and it never is, happens. Is that something that you're going to be doing? I would definitely do that. And one thing I, uh, that's one thing that's so big with me, Tony, is that hold me to that. Okay, if I'm elected, there will be quarterly meetings or whatever, but there will be set meetings. And, um, and I've talked to a lot of people on that. You know, people want to know what's going on in their city. People want to know, and, and you know, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. You know, we keep talking about this one doesn't come to that or, or this and that, because we're not communicating to anything. The more people know, the more they get involved, you know, and we need that. So in terms of working with the other city councilors, would you do that? Would you do your own meetings? I know that the current councils have the, they're doing some sort of meeting. Joint meetings, joint yes. Joint meetings now. So would you want to do your own or would you still be a part of that, that, that cohesiveness? I would be, where, a, I would be a part yeah. of that cohesiveness. Right. However, I'm going to have a meeting with or without them. And I'm gonna hold them to, if, the, if, it's, if it's a joint meeting, I'm gonna hold them to that. Because, you know, let's not talk about it and say we're gonna have one and then three months later, you know, when everything is nice and quiet, you know, it just slides on by. 
you know, we're going to hold that meeting. Whether there's one person that shows up to the meeting or 100 people that show up at the meeting, we're going to have that meeting. In terms of city revenue, are you for a hiring freeze? At the moment, Tony, we got to do, we got just, uh, Desperate Times calls for drastic measures. Mm -hmm. Okay, and right now I believe that we, we're having some uh, desperate times in the city of Brockton. Okay, so anything is possible at the moment, you know what I mean, including that, yes. And uh, I, I would have to say sitting right here, just shooting off the cuff, yes. Yes, it would be. In terms of looking at um, our union contracts, would you be interested in asking our unions to hold off on a wage increase? I would. You know, and, um, but you know, you know how the unions are also. I mean, it's very hard to do. Um, they have to and eat. I understand, they have to eat. Right, and I yeah. understand where they're coming from. I mean, um, I was with the local 589, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's good to have someone advocating for you. You know, I, I understand that. You know, it's a, it's, a hard, uh, it's a hard pill to swallow, right. you know? And like I said, I'm a realist. I mean, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, my heart is in it. You know, so I, I try to see things on both sides of the table, but at the end of the day, some hard decisions have to be made. So, as you know, the NAACP has been really involved in diversifying the municipality, as we touched on earlier, mm -hmm. whether it's the school department, whether it's the police department. Interesting enough, because you have a law enforcement background, what, do you, what comes to your mind with respect to how do we increase the number of people of color that are superior officers? Currently, the city of Brockton has one, a temporary sergeant. First of all, we have to start looking at some of the officers that are, that are due for, uh, or some of the superior officers that are due for uh, retirement, okay? And sometimes maybe you might have to uh, offer a package to clear some of, the, uh, some of the space because I think we do need to, um, we definitely need to hire and promote some of our officers, our minority officers, to uh, um, the ranks, you know, to the um, commanding ranks Do you okay, of the I, police department. So, so Gary, I, I'm going to cut you off. And the fire department. No, no, and I got that. But I, so let me just ask, do you believe, uh, as a former person of color who is in law enforcement, that there is a re there's a requirement needed to have a separate list to promote sergeants? Or should we just go by, or even lieutenants or captains, should we just go by the general civil service list? There is an opportunity, whereas the mayor can have a separate list uh, for minority officers. Uh, I push back on having that list myself mm -hmm. because I think that people that are scored high should be promoted. But it's really right. my concern is how do you deal with past discrimination? You know, again, Tony, you're asking some really good, tough questions. Um, you know, I'm glad it's the mayor's job and not mine. <laughs> 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 good political answer. <laughs> that was a good comeback, actually. I'm glad it's his job. Right, right. Um, however, I do believe that the person that scores the highest sometimes, when I was, when I was doing things, basically, yes. it was the person that scored yes, the highest. Yes, yes. However, as a minority candidate, I made sure that my score was just as high as anybody else's. Right. Okay, so. So you're not trying, so again, candidate that scores the highest gets the promotion. Yep, but I do agree with the mayor having a separate list sometimes to where if it's a close, if, if it's a point or so, he be. needs to be, yes. All right, take this last minute for closing arguments. Well, basically, uh, my name is Gary Keith Sr. I'm running for candidate, um, counselor at large again for the great city of Brockton. Again, I told you um, that I'm married. I raised my family here. I do have an extensive background in law enforcement, U.S. Army veteran. I sit on the planning board and the zoning board for the past four years, so I gained the experience that I need to actually join my brethren here that are already sitting in the city council. They're so experienced, does matter. And I'm asking the folks of Brockton to actually cast their vote for me. Um, again, this is Gary Keith, senior. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. We had Thank Gary Keith much, in the Tony. studio today. Well, the next time we're gonna get Moses Rodriguez. Thank you for coming to the NAACP Forum. We are Brockton's choice for civil rights news.